So you're going to be presenting for us, Alistair, the Teletext Community and ZXNet Teletext Page Editor, which is a subject I don't know too much about. So if you could introduce yeah. yourself and tell us a little bit about it, that would be absolutely great. Well, I'm Alistair, and uh, uh, in October, I was doing a, running a Teletext, uh, a virtual Teletext event, and Dave asked um, if I wouldn't mind coming on one of these at some point to... Uh, to talk about it here, um, which has now caught up with me. <laughs> so, um, a few got a few notes of things to, to chat about. But if I if I put up my first, uh, this is my uh, editor that I've been working on for uh, two or three years, um, and it, it started out because. There was uh, another editor, um, which has been mentioned on uh, other uh, presentations, called Edit TF, um, and that very strictly stri sticks to the the original um, 1970s Teletext specification. Uh, and I, I was reading the the enhanced Teletext specification from the 90s, and it was full of all sorts of exciting looking features. Um, that I wanted to play with, and the only way I could do that was to develop my own editor to create them. Uh, so that's how that all started, um, and it, it's grown into a bit of a monster and spawned several related projects. So I'll uh, I'll show off bits and pieces of those. Um, but also uh, to to talk about how the um, the, the teletext scene has, has grown up in the last uh, few years, four or five years, to um, to be you know a, quite a healthy uh, scene of its own um, retro technology and um, particularly art. Uh, obviously, you've, you've seen Pixel Blip's uh, uh, efforts, and he's he's become a very prolific teletext artist in the last year or two. Uh, but there's there's a large large community of people doing uh, teletext artwork or mode seven artwork, um, and uh, they they've been the driving force of the events that we run really. Um, so my first involvement with a teletext event was in uh, 2017 when we uh, did one at the Centre for Computing History, um, and I took a load of uh, sorted bits of gear to set up a teletext system, um, closed circuit uh, for several televisions, and a um, artwork editing server so that everybody could uh, edit edit pages and have them put straight into the system. Um, all, all a bit cobbled together out of uh, um, what bits of tech I had and so on at the last minute. But then in 2018, we did another event and uh, having had more than two weeks to prepare, I streamlined things a bit and built some special hardware to run it and so on. Um, I don't really know where to where to go first. I suppose uh, we'll start with, start with that. We've got some photos of the... Uh, the event we did in um, in Cambridge. Um, so I'll, I'll put those up in the background for a minute and say, um, really, I'm building on the shoulders of uh, <laughs> a bunch of much uh, smarter coders. Um, there's there's two in particular, uh, Peter Kwan and Alistair Buxton, who developed the two pieces of software that make uh, all of the 
the generation of teletext signals for the, you know the serv the new services that we run uh, possible the Alistair Buxton wrote uh, Raspberry Teletext, which is able to generate a, a proper Teletext signal uh, out of the composite output of a Raspberry Pi. Um, and and it, it takes a, a Teletext data stream as its input. So anything that can be carried by Teletext, you can feed it into there and it just generates the output signal. So the other part of the puzzle is uh, VBit, VBit2 by Peter Kwan, and that uh, takes um, directories of Teletext pages and uh, outputs those, you know, to the um, the cycle times of carousel pages and uh, and things like that, and puts in all the special packets for um the navigation by fast text and so on so uh, those two pieces of code allowed me to um, cobble together a multi-channel um, closed circuit system by having multiple raspberry pis and uh, video modulators and things all into a big uh, tangled mess on the floor if i've got a photo somewhere uh, it'd be hard to hard to see on there, but that was that was the setup that I had for uh, the Cambridge event. A big a big tangled mess of spaghetti, um, and then over the over the next year before the next service, I neatly built it all, uh, neatly built it all into a box, all hidden away. So that's now what I take to. The, the teletext events hopefully we'll be allowed to have some again in the future um, but i can i just plug in plug in a, uh, a a distribution splitter and then we can just have a whole room full of televisions all getting four channels of uh, television signals basically uh, for the for the genuine experience of uh, of playing with teletext basically and there's uh, some photos from the the event we did in 2018 in wigan uh, absolutely tiny uh, room a little art gallery and maker space uh, but, but we all piled in there with um, several televisions and uh, we, we try to do one of those events every year um, covid permitting uh, so last year we, we moved, as you've done with your uh, events, we moved them online, of course. And uh, I ran uh, live streams from here, um, again, using the, the, the editing system that I, I wrote for the block parties. I put that online so it was open to the whole world to come and vandalise pages to their heart's content. Um, uh, I suppose that brings me on to the the new services. Uh, obviously, with not being um, not being in a room together, particularly this year, the the uh, inserter box I built didn't come into play. But my other project, based on the the rendering code of the teletext editor, is a, a live teletext viewer, uh, which uh, essentially simulates the television, the television remote and everything. And this this takes um, the same teletext data stream that VBit generates um, and passes it through a, uh, a server that sends relevant packets. It does a bit of a cheat and only sends the packets that the television is waiting for to save bandwidth, but it sends those to the, the web browser so, and everything behaves in real time, just as you would expect on an older television. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll look at the the uh, editor a bit more. Um, this was, as I say, yeah, I start. I wanted to add more and more features to it. 
um, that Edit TF didn't have. Um, and uh, Richard earlier was talking about um, Cyrillic and uh, Arabic. So, whoops, that was, uh, that's one of the things that's supported in the teletext specification as well. Um, various uh, different languages. So um, I, I put Cyrillic in and also um, oh, me zooms a bit uh, off, isn't it? Uh, this is using the Arabic character sets. This is actually a, a Persian page, um, but so it has a, a few uh, extra issues for displaying the characters which are, are not in the standard Arabic uh, character set, but to all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. This is why I was asking Richard about um, whether he has the ability to uh, enter um, text in, in real time, because in, in teletext, it's even more complicated than usual because some of the characters are combined with, with two um, individual glyphs in the character set and they're all fairly haphazardly randomly assigned to code points so it's uh, a lot of uh, lookup tables and um, and things like that to to be able to translate between the unicode code points or in my case it's the the key press uh, javascript tell gives you the the unicode character for a key press um, but uh, I haven't yet worked out how I can split them into multiple uh, multiple uh, glyphs to put on the page yet. Uh, luckily, I've not uh, had, um, or maybe unluckily, this is why I haven't done it. Nobody uh, has approached me wanting to do an Arabic translation yet. So that's why things like that haven't happened. The editor uh, is designed in such a way that it can be uh, trivially uh, internationalised um, if people uh, who are native speakers can provide me translations. So uh, I can switch it all into German and also select the appropriate keyboard layouts for the different uh, nationalities. Um, so, yeah, again, if if people want uh, translations into their languages, uh, all they have to do is provide me translations for all the various strings. Um, that's been the stumbling block: is convincing people that they should uh, help translate it. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Um, uh, what else? Um, there's. Uh, in terms of the, the Teletext scene, um, the community, uh, we've already shown one of the Teletext services, new Teletext services that are run online, and that's TFAX. That's the, the oldest of the, um, of, of the community services, shall we say, uh, created by Peter Kwan, the, who, who created the VBIT software. Um, Another service is uh, run by a chap called Nathan Dane, and he scrapes the BBC website uh, to generate a CFAX service based on the the last sort of style of CFAX before the service was shut down. So uh, it's based on all the templates from uh, 2012 and before. Uh, and again, this is it's all uh, run from um, the current news. It updates every few minutes or a quarter of an hour or something. Um, uh, it's got uh, hopefully the TV listings, assuming that the service that he gets the TV listings from hasn't broken again. No, there we are. And that's available um, for various... Um, BBC television regions, he generates a different version 
of all the regional pages for each TV region. So I've got this this one I'm hosting. I've got set up for Yorks and Lynx, as that's my TV region. Um, the the third channel uh, is running a service called Chunky Text. This was the the service I was using for the the block party um, editing uh, server. I, I would uh, stand up a service for the event for that, uh, and then in 2019, uh, I did uh, an event with it that uh, people contributed loads of um, sort of editorial content as well. And we decided after that um, that we would just keep the service online uh, indefinitely and make that be the the, the home of the um, event services, shall we say. So uh, rather than taking it all down, throwing it away and then putting one up again next year, that's now living as a permanent service. As you can see, it needs a new front page. So uh, if anybody fancies designing a front page for the service, um, to save me always doing it. Uh, there we are, it's got the uh, index. That gives you an idea of all the sort of stuff we have on it, um, including some, uh, it's a mixture of stuff recovered from old Teletext limited uh, services um, and and stuff people have created new. Uh, that's something else I should talk about is uh, another aspect of the Teletext scene, apart from the artists, um, there's a, a strong, um, an active community of people recovering uh, pages from VHS tapes. Uh, that's using another piece of software by Alistair Buxton, which you you may know VHS, the, the video bandwidth available in VHS is too low to correctly store a teletext signal. The, uh, the frequency of that digital signal is too high. But by recording the the signals from the vertical blanking interval into a computer with a capture card. It can then be processed uh, with this software uh, to deconvolve the the smeared up signal and recover the original or recover um, approximately the original data stream. Uh, it does does result in errors in the in the the data in the process, but there's various ways and means to correct the uh, the data to restore the pages. Um, sometimes to what you can prove is correct. Other times it's uh, an approximation. But uh, there's people restore recovering hundreds and hundreds of pages that were assumed to be lost forever because the the broadcasters um, by and large didn't archive any of the the stuff they put on teletext for more than uh, you know, a few weeks or whatever, uh, unless it was particularly um, interesting pages to to keep for posterity. But uh, and also we, um, Teletext Limited is long gone. Everybody seems to have forgotten anything about it. Who ran it? Um, they lost interest. And the BBC have got, we're told, have got archives of some CFAX pages, but. Uh, possibly in a format that they don't know what to do with or they're just not interested. So, um, yeah, we get, we're going through um, recovering an awful lot of stuff. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the um, the, the kids' cartoon uh, off Teletext Limited uh, from the 90s, Turn of the Worm. So I'm running a, an archive of those steadily working through restoring the pages um, and there's somebody doing uh, digitizer the uh, the computer games magazine from channel four um, and one person heavily involved in that uh, the sort of the first guy to do that 
uh, in a big way before other people started uh, joining in is Jason Robertson. So he's got a website and uh, an archive where he um, shares those uh, pages he's recovered online. Um, I've got some links at the end I can show for all these things. Um, what else have I got on my notes? Uh, I'll tell you in in terms of new teletext services, there's one more um, that's uh, came online last year, and that is uh, some of you might be familiar with TV Arc, the um, the the archive of um, te television uh, program idents and uh, themes and all sorts of things of that nature. Uh, they approached me uh, a year or two ago to ask um, what would be involved in setting up a teletext service, and if I if I could help them with that, and I could say I can do better than that. I can just give you all the code to run one. Um, so uh, together we've set up Spark. Uh, that has uh, various articles about um, television. Uh, history and uh, reviews of the week's television and things and there's even a a, a soap opera serialized on there uh, called rex road so that's that's the newest service <laughs> at the moment um but uh, yeah that that's available on their website, tvart.org. Um, uh, um, what else have I got to say? The uh, I've noticed a few times recently, um, people have asked on Stardot about um, using the old text adapter cheese wedges so uh, I thought this morning I should uh, add that to my notes and mention here um, using the um, the vbit and uh, raspberry teletext software to, to generate a, a teletext signal that's a teletext signal you can feed it into a TV or, or any other teletext decoder um, and that's it's just as as if it was coming off the air. Uh, the only difficulty for using it with the Teletext adapters is that they want um, an RF connection from a, you know they want to be plugged into a TV aerial. But you can get uh, uh, devices like this, uh, like this small standalone uh, video modulator. It just takes composite in on the uh, phono plugs or scart plug and put out to a uh, coax so if you plug that one of those in with uh, raspberry pi with vbit uh, feeding in on the input and the output to the cheese wedge then it's just as simple as following the instructions in the manual basically um, if you don't have one of those uh, if you've got an old video recorder um, usually they can uh, take a, a composite input and feed that out to uh, coax just the same it's uh, probably the same components inside they've just put it in a pretty box uh, there um, and related to that um, a year or two ago I worked with uh, Chris to add um, or to improve the emulation of the teletext adapter in BBEM and add the ability to feed a signal in live into that. Uh, fire those things up. So if I put the teletext command in, hopefully. There we are. Um, this again is taking a, a live uh, data stream straight from uh, VBIT2 
which is running on my PC in this case, um, connected to a, a very simple little packet server that's just shooting them uh, over a, a connection into BBAM. Um, so again, everything everything that you can do, that you could do back when teletext was uh, uh, still being broadcast, um, you can do in there on, on BBAM, uh, including, uh, I've set up a, a small demonstration of the tele, tele software system. Uh, revert, somebody uh, posted um, a document, uh, a specification for the, the tele software uh, transmissions. So I implemented a very simple test there. If, if I tell it to download, it will hopefully save that to the disk disk fault that's helpful well you have to take my word for it it saves the <laughs> saves the file uh, to there and much like the um the the real thing there's the ability to tune in four channels uh, so i've got it set up that it can connect to four different servers at once so you can you can change between services, with the, the function keys and so on. <laughs> um, I think that's everything I've got notes for. It's gone quicker than I thought. I should have uh, thought of more things to offer. Oh, let me put the the links up. some uh, some links to various bits and pieces uh, including the there's a teletext group for the the community and a discord server which has um it's grown over the last year it's got quite popular so all sorts of things there both from uh, artists uh, and um the technical people doing technical side implementing software and so on and the people doing um, the VHS tape recovery, the bits of uh, active communities of each of those on there, if anybody's interested. <laughs> okay, Alistair, well, um, thank you. It's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. We have a couple of questions in the background. And just since I'm the host anyway, and I, I get to say whatever I like, I'm going to say I, yeah. I have actually had some touch with uh, the teletext archaeologist. They, uh, he was recovering teletext from a laser disc we were looking at, the BBC uh, British Garden Birds disc. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we were having a play with that, and it was, it was quite impressive, some of the software they were using to, to recover the, the signal. It's like magic, really, getting the stuff off yeah. the, the tapes. I've, I've done a bit, and... Uh, the first take, the first page you get off a off a tape, is uh, it's a quite a magical experience to for it to have come out of. When you see the signal it came out of, complete nonsense. And yeah, I mean, it, some you finally get all the stuff. settings right, <laughs> and it appears on screen. Yeah, so there's there's still plenty of uh, plenty of good preservation work to be done ar around teletext, That's for sure, and it's uh, it is a worthy cause. Um, so I have a few questions in the chat. Um, first one comes from Ed uh, Doris. She's asking, is there some way for someone, say, in Canada to access these services? Uh, yes. Um, if you if you go to the, the easiest is if you go to the um, this first link here, that's the the, ind the teletext index on my website, and that will take you to the, you can, from there you can get to the teletext viewer, the, the browser browser-based uh, viewer that I showed and that's that's the easiest uh, way for people to to have a play and look at the content of the, the services um, setting up per uh, emulation of the um, the cheese wedge and so on is a bit more involved but again there's there's some notes I, I could do with updating those actually the notes for the for the emulating the teletext adapter but there's a page all about that on there as well okay 
Um, second one, it's, um, it's more of a comment, I think, than a question, but uh, Richard mm -hmm. Russell says that uh, in connection with the BBC tele BBC's teletext archive, some years ago, he was involved in converting a substantial amount of it to GIF images, so it could be more mm -hmm. easily preserved. So perhaps there's some discussion that could be had there. Um, the other question I have is from Chris N. Um, first of all, he says, thank you very much for the contributing the improvements to BBEM is one comment. But uh, he also asks, uh, are there any of the VBIT files available? Because um, he'd like to be able to try them out locally in VBEM. Uh, need to elaborate <laughs> on the question, I think. Um, all of the VBIT stuff is open source on GitHub. Uh, and the, the page files that the, set, the services download um, are in various uh, version control. Some of them are in Git, some of them are in Subversion. Um, the, the addresses for those are kind of baked into the installer script for VBIT. So if you, if you poke around in the, um, in the bash scripts in there, you will find, find where it's getting the pages from. Um, and they're, they're in TTI format, uh, Again, on the on my page on my teletext index, somewhere in there, I've got a link to the the format document for TTI. Uh, although I've added some extensions, non-official extensions to the format over the years to um, to implement some of the higher level features of tele of the enhanced teletext specification. Um, I should say I'm involved also in VBIT2, um, Peter, and I was I was uh, supplying some patches and so on, and, and Peter invited me and said, do you just want to be made a contributor on the repository and <laughs> knock yourself out? Um, so I have done and con contributed a lot of the, well, all of the higher level um, teletext um, features. So for... Let's see if I bring up the 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 Persian page. That's that's using um, various abilities to add characters to the page and so on. If I switch to render level one here, all of the black foreground text disappears, which uh, you know you recognise from a from a BBC. There's no uh, black um, tech foreground text. Um, and adding some of the, the characters in to make it Persian. Uh, see if I can quickly bring up some of the more uh, exotic features. I think it might be 750. Three might be a good one. Um, and some, but not all, are implemented in the in the viewer. So there, you know, that's something you wouldn't have seen on on UK teletext um, outside a few test pages in the eighties uh, and early nineties. But uh, you you can do uh, there's there's a palette of uh, four thousand and ninety six available colours. Uh, to choose from and a whole bunch of uh, extra smooth graphics drawing shapes and so on um, so all of that sort of facilities that were added to the specification later and then never really took off they got some limited use uh, in the continent on the continent there's uh, a couple of german services uh, use use the extra colors and so on um, but very complicated to edit and um, generate the, the the pages for. I think was uh, always a bit of a problem that the the software to, to to edit them was cumbersome and hard to use, and it's it's hard to implement um, in the, the hardware for the televisions or was in in the nineties where things were more based on discrete chipsets. These days, modern televisions, everything is implemented in just firmware running on a, 
an embedded operating system. So rendering all these colors and so on is not, not difficult for modern TVs. But uh, I think there was a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation that none of the TV stations could be bothered to put in the effort of uh, implementing something that nobody was going to be able to see because they, they have the only... Oh, <laughs> Forgot that was on that carousel. <laughs> they they had the only um, uh, hardware available to render it, um, and then another TV manufacturers wanted to spend lots of money putting in um, uh, an implementation of something that no broadcasters were broadcasting. So it uh, stagnated, unfortunately. Uh, I suppose I better put the links back up. Well, I think um, since uh, there's no more questions in the in the, the private messaging coming in, what I'm going to do is is um, well, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk about the the, the editor and your work with it. Very interesting. Um, yes, I hope that was uh, sufficiently. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very good. In depth. And, <laughs> What, I, what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll, I'll remove you as a spotlight video and just open it to the floor. And if anybody wants to mm -hmm. ask Alistair any questions, just turn on your webcam and uh, feel free. And uh, Alistair, thanks, thanks again for taking the time. Really appreciate it. No problem. And do we have any questions? Hi. Um, something... Um... Richard added uh, recently to his um, BBC SDL was, was the ability to load a custom custom character set into the teletext. Um, his demo uses it to show other code pages. Um, I'm wondering if that could be adapted for um, Arabic for displaying teletext pages in Arabic. Well, it, there's a couple of um, of things. The, the The teletext specification has uh, a whole bunch of different uh, character sets defined, and then it also has the um, the concept of a, a redefinable character set where the glyphs themselves are transmitted over teletext. Um, so you can you can add a a limited number of um, additional uh, glyphs um, to pages that aren't that, that weren't uh, thought of when the the specification was written. I've used that um, for adding uh, emoji to uh, somebody wrote a, a thing for scraping Twitter, the Twitter API to to d display tweets, and uh, so I thought well. So many tweets have got emoji, and we'd, we'd better implement emoji in teletext as well. Um, so uh, there's, I, I'm afraid I I see everything from the teletext specification point of view of what things are and aren't possible in teletext. Um, but uh, how how that how that uh, goes to how how things are implemented in um, in basic implementations and so on, I, I couldn't say. But uh, everything's everything's specified how how to do it. So <laughs> if if you implemented things to match up with how the teletext does it, uh, I'm sure it would just kind of plug in and work the same. The original uh, Mullard SAA five hundred five X chips had different languages, and one of them was Arabic. Um, I've actually implemented this, um, uh, put, I think it was about 17 different character sets into 1.25k for um, an atom tell. So uh, Arabic was partially supported in Teletext version one. Um, and uh, of course, as, as was said earlier, the, there's the glyphs as well. I think, is it 10 by... Uh, 10, 10 dots wide by something for the Teletext 2 spec? I'm not sure. In the specification, they're defined um, 10 by 12, yeah. Um, the, 
the slight uh, annoyance with the the um, the mullard uh, chips. Uh, obviously, what the work they'd done was was then incorporated uh, uh, by the later Teletext specifications. It was all taken into account. Um, slightly annoyingly, the, the the character sets that are available in those chips don't quite match up with what was uh, was specified later on. So uh, there's a slight a difference between those. But that's what um, the Edit TF editor implemented. Um, the character sets from the the SAA fifty uh, five hundred five X chips. So that that's another place where Edit TF diverges slightly from the Teletext specification, um, but uh, not in a major way. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, diverting so much as if if somebody was implementing Teletext circuitry with that particular flavor of the teletext chip then they would just have those character sets the those inbuilt character sets maybe yes you you would get characters not necessarily what what the page was intended to display um because you, you get slightly different national option characters and things like that um broadly speaking the 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 sort of english german Spanish, Italian, and so on, they're all, um, they're all, uh, they're normal. It's, it's things like one of the chips is a, a, a US ASCII uh, chip, which doesn't really correspond to anything in teletext um, as such. Um, so you have to be careful creating artwork and things using Edit TF, assuming that you're going to be able to convert them to uh, to teletext if you've used if you've put it in a mode of one of the the slightly odd um, character sets things you'll you'll not necessarily be able to get it look the same on a television but uh, that's me being very nitpicky about <laughs> what, what things are in the spec and what aren't no that, that's completely un i i i came up with the concept of sort of like code pages um to implement all of the all of the character sets at, at once, and think again, this is a divergence from the teletext specification. But I I, I uh, completely agree with what you're saying. I mean, it's not um, it's not standard stuff, but um, it does does it, it allows to crowbar in sort of um, you know other character sets and that, doesn't it? Yeah, and they, they obviously, um, when they were doing the enhanced Teletext specification, they put a lot of thought into uh, how best to to squeeze the extra character sets in and so on. Um, and and there's, there's gaps left, reserved values. So if they'd wanted to put Chinese and Japanese and so on in, I'm sure they could have done uh, if, if there'd been a later version, uh, if that had been necessary. But uh, it's it is a, it's based on having separate character sets. Um, the, the the Latin character set uh, as one, and then the the Arabic and Hebrew and so on or others, uh, and then sub um, character sets essentially the uh, all the all the uh, accented characters in in French. And then in Spanish and Italian and so on, they need different characters, so they're they're implemented as national option character sets, uh, national option subsets, something like that they call them, um, and it replaces replaces the um, what what we would recognise the pound sign and uh, the double pipe and half and quarter and so on symbols. They're all replaced by you know, accented E's and C's of Cedilla and so on, uh, as as required in the various national subsets. Can I just back up what Michael was saying? In, in, I know in his basic and in mine, we've really gone for the SAA 505X way of doing things rather than the Telestex spec way of doing things. Well, A, because it was easier, and B, because it <laughs> yes. seems, seems slightly more in keeping with BBC Basic, sort of mm -hmm. thinking of its history of the BBC Micro 
and the, the chip it happened to you. So at the moment, they, they emulate, to a degree anyway, that chipset rather than what the Teletext spec says. Yeah. You're a bit stuck having to take one approach or other, aren't you? It's, it's right. difficult to, to combine them. I mean, I I'm, I'm have the other problem that uh, people want to to be able to do mode seven graphics in the editor but for me to put the the uh, i won't necessarily call them bugs because i don't think it was necessarily specified rigidly in the first place but the the difference in the way that hold mode uh, works for the mosaic graphics in the saa 5050 to everyone else essentially um being able yeah, to emulate that in the in the text editor as an option yeah michael and i so both have a vdu call i think which can enable or disable that whole graphics yeah. mode yeah it, it touches so much so much of the code <laughs> it becomes a pain to support both and flipping that toggle also enables um alpha and graphics black which aren't available on the saa 5050 set yes that code was added was introduced in riscos 5 but we've both extended it to fix the whole bug mm -hmm. yeah one of the character sets i added was the katakana ones they were there was a, an article i think it was about 1973 uh, for a, a device called the uh, television typewriter. It was a, an early um, VDU circuit in practical wireless or something. And, and that used a chip, I'm not sure. I think it, that might have been also made by uh, Signetics, I think, uh, that did the Katakana uh, set. And I just added that to the Teletext set and then used some of the uh, codes that that did nothing in Teletext one to 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 soft switch pages and and so on so that you could have all the uh, all the different languages in memory at once. But um, there's there's some really cool things in Teletext two where you you um, color codes for example don't take up any any blocks on the screen do they? You can mm. you can sort of um, non spacing make, attributes. Yeah, it make, makes it a lot more um, compact and, and, and by sort of extending the uh, spec y yourself that way, you can, you can get some quite uh, complicated displays out of it. The, the difficulty with, uh, with using any of the, uh, the higher level features uh, and partly I think what put anybody off doing it is that with such a, a huge installed base of um, level one receivers out there in the wild you can't create uh, pages which rely uh, completely to be to be usable on um, on the higher level features so they essentially get relegated to being used as enhancements that you can make the colors nicer and you can add slightly prettier graphics and so on but you've always got to have the the level one, um, the graphics and, and so on as a fallback uh, hidden behind for um, for the, the receivers that don't support it. And again, that adds a, a whole new, another constraint on uh, the artwork and so on that you can create because you're now trying to solve two problems <laughs> rather than trying to make something that looks nice at uh, level one. Uh, you're trying to make something that looks nice at level one and level two. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say it, it is it is very much uh, hindered by the, the fallback position, isn't it? And it, it's one of those odd things where something that should have been a, an enhancement, it, it sort of never really took off, did it, the, the, the higher level teletext? Because as you say, a lot of people had TVs that were based on the old teletext one system. It's, it's like it was the almost next one held it back simultaneously too late because um everybody who was going to have a tv already had a tv teletext and too early because they were developing it at a time when the processing and the amount of ram required to implement it all would be prohibitively expensive um at least when they were doing it back in the 80s things 
things got more integrated onto chips into the 90s and so on. But uh, when you're going to add, have to add all that RAM and an extra processor and things into a TV to implement it, it's going to become very expensive just to add a few colours. Like I say now, it's it's just firmware, so it doesn't cost them anything, uh, which is why most new TVs support level two with no <laughs> no fanfare. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was just an oddity, wasn't it? You know, like you say, it was it was almost like um, simultaneously too fast and too slow. Yeah. Just so that it's not lost, um, Jonathan is making some comments in the Zoom chat. His his microphone isn't working today. But um, he's saying that um, oh, sorry. he's just saying in the chat that there's some links to the SAA 5050 information on his site and also some information about the VDUs that control the extensions. So uh, probably worth noting. <laughs> he's very passionate about these subjects. Alistair, is there something funny about double height on the SAA? A fifty-fifty. It's not um, the SIA fifty-fifty that is funny uh, so much as the BBC's implementation differing from a teletext decoder. When you receive a teletext page, you take the the uh, data that you've received for the the top line and just duplicate it down in memory. Um, whereas on the B, because you have complete control over the memory you can put different bytes in the lower half of the the double height to the, the upper half so again that's something where implementing that in my editor is out of scope because it's a teletext editor um, but uh, for that's i know a, a feature that was used in in menus menu screens for games and things having different colors on the upper and lower halves um yeah, it does, it what does i do when i when i export pages in i have an option specifically for exporting uh screens for bbc micro which or duplicates them for you so that you don't have to carefully put things in top and bottom Yeah, it's strange because the, the chip does something. It remembers that it's double height for the second line somehow, which doesn't seem to fit with this, the way the rest of the chip works. Yeah, that yeah. is an odd one. I didn't. So, is it? Am I right in saying that um, on a on a teletext receiver, you can't have a double height line um, in two colours like you do see in many games? menus as you say is that right yeah correct because you've you've no direct uh, control over the contents of the memory it just copies the the contents down from the uh, the top one the top line into the, the line that would be hidden behind because um, there's no there's no need to broadcast the line that's hidden behind and in fact you can and have completely different stuff hidden away there that no one would ever see um, usually by accident when an editor didn't remember to delete the stuff before adding double height above it. Um, what you can do in the higher levels is put stuff um, on the align. Oh, it's probably easiest if I show a demonstration, actually, because it's it's kind of a... It's one of these things where in the teletext specification, it gives you a couple of line explanation um, in a really condensed uh, form that doesn't really explain what any of it means. If you have um, some background colour, try picking one that's not the same. Um, if I now put the second half of the row to uh, normal height, it will copy the background colour down. And I can't put anything in here below because it will always just show a blank space uh, below any single height stuff on a, the bottom half of a double height line. Now, in higher level uh, teletext, using the non-spacing attributes and so on, it is possible to put things in that space. Um, 
but again you couldn't <laughs> use it for anything really because it won't work on the on the level one display so it's a feature that's there but not much use for anything um, yeah because my original teletext uh, tv remote had a, a function called magnify i don't know if you remember that on the old analog televisions so that was all almost like quadruple height uh, it would have been you know something built yeah. in circuitry this one <laughs> yeah that's it so <laughs> they're actually quadruple and i i thought you you can't you can't really mimic that on a, on a bbc micro uh, 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 which was something i wanted to do for um mm. uh, a, an editor i wrote back in the day the... yeah was uh, i remember seeing it on our old sony trinitron back in the day that was uh, a fairly new feature and that was in the mid 90s I've seen one person uh, has, has told me of a, a TV they had which had a bug where it couldn't display the uh, the quadruple height stuff if if it if you put it in um in uh, picture stretch mode any mm. double height text stayed double height and and things if things were hidden behind that they would then appear um but uh, I don't know what model of television it was and what hardware it was using, but uh, it's uh, and obviously not thought out and tested feature when they were developing it. <laughs> yeah, the viewer, the viewer does all sorts of uh, implements, all the silly things like it's got the uh, picture mix mode as well. Oh, that's uh, cool. To, I like that. <laughs> behind. And also there's, Nothing on TFAX to demonstrate it, but well, I suppose if I flip to to Spark, I can demonstrate it. Uh, is it one six four possibly? The alarm clock, so you can uh, enter the time code. Uh, if I do uh, one seven two nine, and quickly cancel the picture away. When it gets around, it's broadcast. That page is is broadcasting the um, the time coded sub page numbers. So when it gets around to that, it will acquire that page and bring it back up on screen. Hopefully, <laughs> it'd be embarrassing if it doesn't. Or if I keyed the number in wrong. There we go. <laughs> so, and we've got uh, reveal and so on as well, uh, and all of the the fast text is implemented that was another one i tried to implement on uh, the, back in the 80s on on the bbc micro was the uh, conceal and reveal thing and it just went through memory and replaced all the hides with spaces i think uh, to to implement that but what what was that viewer that you were just using is can we download and use that somewhere that that's on my website um well the the and then the the tv arc website has a copy of it as well for their service uh, that's uh, if you go let me bring the link i'll show you uh, the the teletext index on my website has got um uh, it goes to all the, the various projects uh, and i'll paste the url for the viewer into the Zoom chat. That uh, that is is tuned in, as it were, to uh, the various services. Uh, I'm running servers for them all on my server, so you can uh, you can go out of uh, the teletext and change channel and and bring up a different uh, service and so on. Uh, I'm re realizing I've not shown the the uh, one that's proven pop mm. <laughs> maybe because it doesn't work today uh, that's embarrassing uh, that's something I, I threw together for the um, the teletext event we did in October to show doing 25 frames per second uh, digitized video via a teletext signal um which is real gimmick it's completely useless 
practically, but uh, people seem to like the globe. That's converted using the um, Teletext Express um, program that the the guy who runs BC, BBC, is it Basic Bot or Micro Bot? I can never remember on Twitter. Uh, he, he put that conversion script together. So I, uh, I I decided to abuse Teletext by throwing more packets than uh, was expected. <laughs> That's really nice. Um, I was. Uh, you said earlier about all these different people that are recovering pages and that. Uh, I'm familiar with with most of their work. I was <clears throat> just wondering. I think I did ask them back in the day. Uh, is there has there been any um, sort of consolidated effort to to pool them all in one central um, archive of the BBC pages? Do you know? Yeah, well, Jason Robertson is running uh, an archive on his website, uh, Teletext Archaeologist, um, and he's taking submissions from the other recoverers um, to put their stuff up. It's it's not sort of curated as such. It's a big dump of all the recoveries um, uh, that people have, have done in various sort of states of quality some of them are straight off the tape um the stuff i post i go i try to go to lengths to only upload um things that are confirmed by checksum matching and so on um as a as a archive where, where possible where where the transmissions included checksums um yeah, I said, I said his approach is more to just put everything, you know, equally valid approach. It needs to be uh, saved somewhere. Uh, I sent um, Jason, I did a recreation of the um, three of a kind game show intro screen. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. I, I did. I've, I've, I created all all the um, the graphic pages that they did, you know, like the three penny piece and the three blind mice and all that. Um, it, that'd be quite nice to make into a 25 uh, hertz digital video that, that you showed. That I'd quite like to put that up there. I've been contacted by a, a chap who apparently is giving a presentation at GA Conf EU in March. Um, he's asking about a project called Mavis, uh, or products projects called Mickey and Mavis, which apparently included uh, a teletext art package and ebook stroke word processor. Uh, these are for mostly, I think the project is about disabled people. Does anyone here know anything about those or will be interested in helping him out with them? not something i've heard of i'll put a link in the chat i'll see richard said in the chat uh, full frame teletext is a legitimate thing that's where you use every um or, you know every available picture line for teletext as opposed to just the up to 16 or 17 uh, in the VBI. Um, so that's one way of getting very high data rate stuff. Um, the video example I was showing is only using the VBI. Um, and uh, I can't remember exactly how many lines it uses, but it is... It tells me on one of these pages because there is actually simultaneously uh, a teletext service running. Uh, three lines per field. There we are. Six per frame. Yeah. Six so packets, three per frame. That's whatever that is. Then ten. No. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen packets uh, for field for the the video. Um, 
So it's not not practical. <laughs> don't think uh, CFAX would have been too impressed if somebody had said, let's put video on. You just have to up your up your cycle times to wait 10 minutes for each page to come round. It'd be fine. But uh... Is that what um, Tomorrow's World used to transmit? I think it was the King James Bible. I've no idea. <laughs> I would imagine they... Uh... <laughs> Before your time, maybe. Yes, definitely. You remember um, the uh... of Television Centre for some reason. They, they ran um, various interesting experiments for things over the years. Um, and one, that's one of the great things about doing the VHS recovery is that we're getting um, recoveries of test pages and things that nobody would have necessarily seen, stuff that was put on air just for an hour um, to be, you know, use the, um, the Envision decoder. Uh, to record the output of that to to videotape to use for for something for for program, um, they would just stick it on when uh, they thought no one was looking and record it. And this they get, they would have got away with it if it wasn't for these pesky uh, VHS recoverers coming forty years later, <laughs> finding all of the secrets hidden in there, um, things that were never. Um, there's some uh, packet one data streams and stuff, weren't there? Yes, yes, the, the data broadcast. Um, one of the, the most uh, tantalising ones, and we have recovered some of that, is uh, uh, is it uh, Telfax, the internal teletext service oh, that they wow. had uh, displayed on, on TVs around uh, Television Centre and so on. Um, that is, was transmitted over a data broadcast channel, presumably to the regional centres, was then decoded and, and put uh, out for a, a teletext insert onto their closed circuit system. So that is, again, all uh, has escaped in the VBI, <laughs> um, and uh, we can decode it. Stuff like that is very difficult because it was transmitted, um, or a lot of... Uh, the data broadcast stuff was transmitted as 8-bit eight, eight data, which is um, harder to re recover than the 7-bit um, the no, parity mean, stuff. Well, it's just just for the, the, the case that you've got uh, twice as much data to sift through in the first place, it slows everything right down, deconvolving it. Um, and similarly with the um, the enhanced teletext stuff that's all transmitted in um 18 uh, 24 uh, bit hamming codes so again we have to deconvolve that all in 8 bit uh, mode as it were and slows things right down but uh, I just it's harder to mm -hmm. is there a link to your this teletext page editor that we're looking at is there there a link to that so that we can use it somewhere. Yeah, I mean that it's on the. I'll post the the link to the the index of my my site. That's easiest. Um, all of all of the different things are, are linked off that index page that I've just posted in the chat. Thanks. 